All right, hello everyone. I've got a bigger video coming out, hopefully very soon. But I figured I made this thing and then haven't talked about it other than like posting about it in some weird places. But like my YouTube channel is actually my main way of getting the word out for stuff. So this is a little project I did over the course of basically a week, um, a few, about a month ago. And uh, the idea was I just wanted to entertain myself and come up with a way to make a robot that could auto curate a list of cards to put in an auction draft and i was like well the thing i would want that bot to do is be able to intelligently figure out what the best cards are pull them out and put them in a draft and i was like well i don't want to go and write every netrunner card and also i'm very biased and i'm going to forget things so why don't i instead turn this over into a crowdsource project and so that's what i did and so this is what i ended up making this is called uh, a website called trasher busto uh, which is maybe, in retrospect, not the best name, but um, the basic idea is you get two cards and you're just asked which card is stronger, and then you choose the card you think is stronger and you click on it. What's happening in the background here is that every single card is getting an ELO rating, and then whenever they're paired up against each other, it calculates the match, and then whoever you click on counts as winning, whoever you don't click on counts as losing, and it does a recalculation to figure out what their new ELO is. There's some special rules I have behind this algorithm. You can also see the top five by faction, the bottom five by faction, and that's sort of it. I should probably add an about page and a link to the GitHub, so if people want to request or add other features, they can do that. Um, but you know, I've had a lot of fun with this, and actually a lot of people have. As of time of recording, this has just shy of 57,000 ratings in it, and it's starting to approximate what I think would be a pretty uh, reasonable uh, ranking of all the cards. Now, in terms of what does stronger mean, I actually intentionally am leaving this pretty open to interpretation, because uh, I do want every person's kind of personal opinions on this. So, um, you know, that's that's it. If you don't know what a card does or is, I would encourage you to try and do some reading about it. It's that you can learn a lot about Never This Way. Um, and if you enjoy this, have thoughts, suggestions, questions, you know, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'm both on GLC and Stim Slack pretty frequently, uh, but comments in this video would also be appreciated. Um, I'm going to round this video out to about four minutes just by doing some clicking on things and maybe doing a brief explanation about why I'm thinking about cards doing stuff. Um, but again, you should rate cards on your own criteria, not on my criteria. So here we've got two different Wayland assets. One of them is click to gain two credits. It costs two credits to res. So it's going to take us a long time to really do much of anything. You know, if we install it and click it three times, I think we've made six credits we've spent. Oh no, turn we install it. Like it takes a long time for capital investors to pay off. It's easy to trash and it's pretty click intensive. Drudge work is pretty powerful because it handles agendas in HQ or archives, shuffles them away. Um, seems to be much stronger. Paper wall and Don's campaign, sometimes you can get these weird ones where it's it's a little incomparable, right? How do you compare an econ asset to a very low strength barrier? I think the reality of the way I'm gonna think the way I often think about this is which card was seen could see play more widely and broadly. Paper wall is decent for what it does, which is basically make the runner get a fractor, but it doesn't even do that terribly well. Adonis campaign has been pretty solid econ. It's been outclassed a little bit, but it isn't too bad. This is another actually quite tricky one. I think I'm going to lean towards the Christium Grid because I think it does something quite impactful. Um, economic Warfare is also very impactful, but actually fairly narrow in the decks that can use it, whereas uh, Christium Grid can go in quite a lot of places. Um, here are some quite old cards. I'm going to be very biased towards cards I ran a lot. I ran a lot more Inti than Crescentus, and Inti actually is subtly a very good barrier breaker for specific metas and points in time. Even actually right now in current standard where most of the barriers are breaking are border control uh, and vanilla, Inti would be very good. It's stuff like IP block and brand that you'd be very sad to hit with your Inti. 
All right, so before I just keep going forever, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I am hoping to have a video out pretty soon. Uh, it's a little bit more weighty.